Him. I said, sit down. If you want to fight, let's go out back and I'll just... Let's just go out back. Being a judge is no easy feat. Take the case of Judge John C. Murphy, for example. He got fired after getting into a physical fight with a public defender. In 2015, a video of Judge John C. Murphy's physical altercation with public defender Andrew Weinstock went viral. During a court hearing in Brevard County, Florida, assistant public defender Andrew Weinstock and Judge John Murphy engaged in a heated argument that quickly turned violent. The incident occurred during a hearing in which Weinstock was pushing to waive his client's right to a speedy trial. According to the video footage, Judge Murphy expressed frustration and allegedly stated that he had instructed the public defender to sit down. The argument between Weinstock and Murphy escalated to the point where the judge challenged the public defender to go into the back hallway, an area of the courthouse that is not viewed by security surveillance systems. The judge reportedly said, If you want to fight, let's go out back and I'll just beat your ass. The argument turned physical in the hallway, with Murphy allegedly repeatedly slugging Weinstock. The sounds of the fight were captured by the courtroom cameras, including several loud thuds. The fight eventually ended, and Murphy returned to the courtroom, where he finished with his rulings. He even commented to those present that he needed to catch his breath, adding, Man, I'm an old man. The incident shocked those present in the courtroom, with many sitting uncomfortably before applauding when the fight ended. The next video is not quite so touching, and the criminal's crimes even more disturbing. The fall of 2012 marked a troubling time for the residents of Glenville. The warning signs were apparent from the start, beginning with the disappearance of Shatisha Sheely. This was only the beginning of a string of unsettling events that would continue to rock the community. Three months later, in December, Shatisha's brother Dantel was shot and killed. Yet again, Shatisha failed to appear at the funeral, leading Kim to fear the worst. It seemed that tragedy had struck twice. Unfortunately, the situation in Glenville was far from over. In late June of 2013, another local woman, Angela Deskins, went missing. Her family launched a social media campaign, sharing photos and pleas for information, but to no avail. The 38-year-old remained missing, leaving the community on edge and worried for their safety. These events would ultimately lead to the discovery of a serial killer in the area, adding to the already palpable fear and unease among Glenville residents. The news of Sherilda Terry's disappearance was devastating for her family. She was an 18-year-old who loved books and was last seen coming home from work. Van Terry and his family took immediate action by putting up missing posters, handing out flyers, and anxiously waiting for any information about her whereabouts. However, the news they eventually received was not what they had hoped for. Madison's arrest came just days after the discovery of the bodies. As more details emerged about Madison's past, it became clear that he was a danger to society long before the killings. In addition to his previous convictions, he had a history of violence against women. A former girlfriend accused him of beating her, and he was also accused of raping a woman he met online. Despite overwhelming evidence against him, Madison pleaded not guilty and went to trial in May 2016. The trial was closely watched by the public, as the community was anxious to see justice served for the victims. Van Terry, grieving father of Sherelda, faced the man who brutally murdered his teenage daughter, Michael Madison, in a courtroom in Ohio. The judge, Nancy McDonald, was there to decide whether Madison should receive the death penalty for his crimes. Terry tried to contain his emotions, but it was evident that he was struggling to hold back his anger and pain. As he addressed the court, Terry spoke about forgiveness and the loss of his child, but then something unexpected happened. Madison, who was seated in a bright orange jumpsuit behind Terry, smiled. That was the breaking point for Terry, who snapped in an instant. 
Terry lunged across the room, over a wooden table, with his arms outstretched toward Madison's neck. Panic alarms went off, and someone in the courtroom pleaded with Terry to stop. Sheriff's deputies intervened and restrained the distraught father before he could reach Madison. Despite Terry's outburst, Madison continued to grin. It was a chilling sight that only added to the gravity of the situation. After the guilty verdict and recommendation for the death penalty, Judge McDonald sentenced Madison to death. In her statement, she said, The evidence shows that you are a monster, and I have no words to describe the pain you inflicted on these families. Madison's case has since been tied up in appeals, with his attorneys arguing that he did not receive a fair trial due to pretrial publicity and ineffective legal representation. As of 2023, he remains on Ohio's death row. A video that was filmed inside a courtroom in Florida gained widespread attention after the presiding judge realized that the defendant was someone she had attended middle school with. In Miami-Dade bond court, a routine hearing for a suspect quickly turned emotional when Judge Mindy Glazer recognized Arthur Booth, who appeared before her on charges of burglary, grand theft, reckless driving, and other charges. Booth was arrested after being seen driving a car that matched the description of one involved in a robbery, leading police on a chase when he refused to stop for officers. As Judge Glazer addressed the suspect, she suddenly asked him a question that had nothing to do with his case. I have a question for you. Did you go to Nautilus for middle school? Booth didn't answer yes or no, but his reaction spoke volumes as he exclaimed, Oh my goodness, and broke down in tears. The judge then went on to describe Booth as the best kid in middle school and recounted fond memories of playing football together. Despite his emotional reaction to seeing his former classmate, Booth still faced the consequences of his actions. Judge Glazer set Booth's bond at $43,000, and he was sent to jail to serve a 10-month sentence. However, their story didn't end there. When Booth was released, Judge Glazer was waiting for him. She greeted him with a hug and words of encouragement, telling him to take care of his family and try to get a job. She also reminded him that he has the potential to do something good for somebody else, despite the mistakes he made in the past. In our next video, District Court Judge R. W. Buzzard was seen taking action when two inmates attempted to escape from his courtroom in Shahalas. The judge removed his robe and ran after the two men, Tanner Jacobson and Cody Howard, who were still in handcuffs and trying to flee down a stairwell. Jacobson was in the lead. As Jacobson reached the bottom of the stairs, Judge Buzzard caught up to him and tackled him, bringing him to the ground. Howard was quickly apprehended by other court personnel. After the incident, Judge Buzzard said that he had to act because there was no one else in the courtroom who could have stopped the escape. I have always been a person who wants to help, he said. I saw them running and I thought, well, I'm not going to let them go. It was just pure reaction. Jacobson and Howard were both charged with attempted escape with Jacobson facing an additional charge of third-degree assault for allegedly kicking the judge during the incident. They were already in custody on separate charges at the time of the attempted escape. Buzzard's quick action prevented the two inmates from escaping and potentially harming others or committing more crimes. He received praise for his bravery and quick thinking, with many people calling him a hero. Sometimes, courtroom drama is the result of those convicted just being total idiots. Alan McCarty Jr., a resident of Milton, Florida, was sentenced to 20 years in prison for threatening to kill Circuit Judge Stacia Warren after she ruled against him in a child custody case. Additionally, he received an extra 10 days for his series of profanity-laced outbursts in court. According to reports, he also threatened a prosecutor's unborn child. During his trial, McCarthy hurled racial slurs and expletives at the judge and an assistant state attorney. Circuit Judge Matt Foreman threatened to duct tape McCarthy's mouth shut, but McCarthy continued to disrupt the proceedings. He was ultimately removed from the courtroom and spent the remainder of his sentencing hearing in another room where he watched the proceeding through one-way glass, the same location he spent much of his trial. 
Foxman also cited McCarthy's previous offer to perform oral sex on him as the reason for an additional 10-day sentence he received. You also offered me to perform a sex act upon you, which I politely declined and still do this day for whatever that's worth, Foxman told McCarthy. State Attorney R.J. Larizza issued a statement saying that McCarthy's 20-year sentence would give him ample time to consider the gravity of his actions against Warren and the judicial system as a whole. As bad as the criminals we have seen so far are, and as dramatic as the courtroom scenes are, we have saved the most theatrical for last. In a rare incident, video footage surfaced of a judge in Michigan intervening physically in a courtroom altercation with a defendant who was being uncooperative. The four-minute video showed Jacob Larson, the defendant, arguing with Jackson County Circuit Court Judge John McBain about Larson's persistent Facebook messages to a woman who had accused him of stalking for about a year, despite having a personal protection order against him. The video footage shows Larson becoming increasingly agitated and interrupting the judge, accusing him of being buddy-buddy with the woman. Larson's interruptions led to his jail sentence being increased to 93 days, and as he was being taken into custody, he resisted and tried to fight the court officer. Judge McBain, who became increasingly frustrated, took off his judge's robe, ran over to the two men, and physically helped to subdue Larson. McBain said that it was the first time he had had to physically restrain someone in his courtroom. McBain has previously made headlines for telling a convicted murderer that he hoped she died in prison. Jackson Judge Chief Circuit Judge Thomas Wilson stated that McBain's actions were justifiable, as judges have the power to take whatever action is necessary to maintain order in the courtroom. Hardly ever a dull moment in court. There seems to be far more to being a judge than being able to bang a gavel. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.